quarter in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Dave Ryan with uh, a beauty. And everybody in town is interested in this one. That, I suppose, the uh, Michigan version of Tightwad Hill. <laughs> a nice warm spot for the goals. As Michigan has a second and nine. Greasy wants to hang this one up for streets and it's overthrown and single coverage with the back. Greasy Michigan settling down, looking much more like the team that had stormed to five straight wins in that third quarter. One reason Breezy was standing back there alone is that Jared DeVries was double teamed in pass protection that time. Another smart decision by the coaches of Michigan. Third and nine for an Iowa defense that would like to force another punt to Tim White. And they come after Breezy, got it off in time for Tim, but he is immediately buried by Cooks at the 30. The strong safety has coverage on the tight end. His job is to either break up the pass or tackle the big guy immediately. Most people don't understand the dynamics and how important that is with a tight end like Tooman. And he prevented, Kerry Cooks prevented the first down. So on the fourth and six, Iowa has, uh, has dropped back both Collins, the nation's leader, and Dwight. And they try to make a punter guess which way Dwight's going to go. Collins comes up though. He's the short man. As Vincent hangs one high. And White won't take a crack at this one. 41 yarder by Vincent. Archives take it over, leading by three. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by MCI Five Cent Sundays. Pay the least on the day you call the most. And by Buick. Welcome to Park Avenue. The all-new Park Avenue by Buick. The power of understatement. Michigan hoping they still have a shot at number one. When this one's all said and done, they trail by three. Hawkeyes take it over look to go to the air. Sherman, for the first time today, has a completion to Tim Dwight. Our latest update now on Penn State, Minnesota from Mike Tarico. Dave, after the touchdown to make it 15-10, Corey Sauter and the Ghosts try to get some in the air, but David Macklin comes up with the interception. Penn State now fourth and goal from the nine, lining up for a field goal down five. Gophers up as much as 15-3 in that game. Iowa as much as 21 to 7 in this one. White went in motion. And Banks says hello to Glenn Steele. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Dave, the Michigan defensive coaches told us they love to have the Iowa Hawkeyes have only 40 plays from scrimmage heading into the fourth quarter. Well, it turns out it was just 38. They say 60 for the game is ideal. The Wolverines have averaged facing 60 through this year, but they say they can face as many as 80 to 85 a game. They feel they're in great shape for fourth quarter action. Usually pretty rested when they get to the fourth. Sherman trying to be heard over the 106,000 plus. They pick up the blitz, and he is out of bounds on the catch by Gibson. Damon Gibson one-on-one -on -one with William Peterson, who has been terrific today. And William Peterson is a true freshman in whom the Michigan coaches have enormous confidence. Jason Baker hasn't been bad either, speaking of true freshmen. And another excellent kick to Charles Woodson. Heads to the sideline, and Michigan sets up at the 39-yard line. 17 on the return of a 45-yard Baker punt. Michigan coming from behind. 
in the third quarter. Shaw gets away with the push off. That's 21 14. 58 yard burst by Anthony Thomas. The longest run from scrimmage by any Wolverine this year. And that sets up on fourth and goal from the one foot line. The sneak by Greece this year. Ensuing kickoff. This is from the three. And he again finds an open room. 72 yards later, Tim Dwight had set Iowa up for the go-ahead field goal. He's touched the ball, Bill, only seven times a day, but Dwight is directly responsible for 10 of the 24 Iowa points. He has to be the most exciting player in America for number of yards per touch. Greasy coming on the bootleg, and there's DeVries. Big day for Jared, the junior from Applington, Iowa, the Lombardi candidate. Has a sack today, his 29th of his career. He's now within four of the record. He already has the record for most yards and tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Broke Andre Tippett's mark in that category at Iowa. And he got that one because of excellent coverage by Kerry Cooks. People ask, well, why'd the quarterback just keep the ball like that? Well, he didn't have any place to throw it. Loss of four, second and 14. Williams. Clarence Williams breaks one off to midfield where he's knocked out by Big Ten. That's 15 for Clarence. This is such a balanced offensive system for Michigan, but there are chances to shine. And in the second half, it's been Williams and Thomas taking advantage. Now, this is a 15 yard game, but you'll see why great free safeties are so crucial to a defensive football team. Eric Thigpen comes across here. Nice tackle, head across the bow, knocks him out of bounds. So it's 15 yards rather than 65. Greasy off the play fake, and there's DeVries again. He is just wearing out Chris Seaman. He's wearing out John Jansen, the offensive captain. And that time he had a chance to work on Zeman and he wore him out too. Huge day. Some of the highlights for Jared DeVries. Right side. But they go draw play for Howard and it's not. Pass batted down, sack, couple of stops behind the line, another sack. Got to account for him. That time, Zeman takes him to the ground as it's intended for Streets. He got locked up in a battle with Gibson, and Streets comes away with it. But there are flags near the line of scrimmage. Might have a face mask back there. Gibson had a, a shot, a pretty good shot, it appeared. Of, Picking off his second interception of the day. Streets out fought him. Now let's see if it stands. We've talked about Streets and his ability to be a big play guy. He made a big play there, although it could be negated by this flag. And yes, it is. And it looks like DeVries has caused yet another negative situation Holding for Michigan. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still second down. DeVries has such enormous talent and great quickness. Zeman decides just to grab him by the throat and jerk him on the ground. But you're just not allowed to do that unless it's Saturday night wrestling. Which that resembles. Yeah, I think it did. So, the seventh Michigan penalty has a second and 31. A big draw play to Anthony Thomas. Mike Tarico, what's up now? Well, I told you Penn State was lining up for the field goal. After a timeout, Joe Paterno says, let's go for the end zone. It's McQuery looking for Brad Scioli. There is contact, but no flag. Minnesota by five inside of five. We will continue to track that one, obviously. This was not bad either. Woodson in the game. They send him wide left alongside Marcus Knight. Williams also in the trip's left side. Streets is right. On third and 30. Greasy had the roll. Fire one up. And out of bounds intended for Streets. And 
I just have to comment on this performance by Jared DeVries. He beat his man so quickly, Chris Zeman. He, he used a beautiful spin move, and he was in Greasy's face immediately, not allowing the pattern to develop. Every bit the player he has uh, been billed to be. They've narrowed that Lombardi list down to 12 semifinalists. Well, if they watch this one, he'll win it. Yeah, he's, he's definitely thinking about that next cut as well. He went after the punt by Vincent. Almost got it. Here comes Dwight. Only manages the 38. 10-yard return. 9.28 to go in Ann Arbor. Iowa still leading by three. Hawkeyes take over. Good field position there. 38-yard line, almost nine and a half minutes to go, but they have not moved the ball in the second half. They got the field goal only thanks to the kick return by Dwight. Pitch it out to Banks. And Fabian, driven near the sideline to pick up five or six to Hanny Jones, finished him off. Mike Tarico. Our latest update. Thomas Hamner, the running back from Minnesota State, had a big day over 125 yards, but on third and three, he lost the ball. Penn State recovers. On the very next snap, they go right to the horse. Curtis Enos, 10-yard touchdown run. They go for two and miss. Number one leads by one with four minutes left. Also, they caught him. They passed him. What does that feel like for Glenn Mason? Well, for Glenn Mason, it feels like we better get a field goal here before this thing is over. You don't allow yourself to become discouraged or your team will, will smell it. Another tackle by Jones on the uh, Banks sweep. A reminder, Michigan in game six still unscored on in the fourth quarter this year. This is what you call, Dave, one of your basic big downs. Yep. Vance Bedford is the secondary coach for this Michigan group of DBs, which has been superb today. Banks tripped up. He's going to be two yards shy the first. They did not at any point, Bill, look to the pass on that possession. Five of 16 for 25 yards, all they've been allowed through the air, so you can understand why they didn't think that. Well, they just had such a tough time getting open. And Sherman has been rattled, frankly. He's been back there with his feet moving and dancing around rather than setting them and stepping up and making throws like he normally does. Big day for the freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Tries to keep this one away from Woods. It does so, but it's a Michigan hop. And then at the 23-yard line. Only a 31-yard Baker punt this time. Michigan will take it from their 23. ESPN2 has a college football doubleheader on tap tonight featuring tough road tests for a pair of top 25 teams. It begins with the Battle of North Carolina, number four Tar Heels at NC State. That's at 6 Eastern. And then number 21 Georgia will take on Vanderbilt on the road in Nashville. Both of those tonight on the deuce. Williams, chased by Cooks, missed the ankle tackle, and finally Clark angled him out of bounds. At that Michigan tailback spot this half, it's been pretty much Williams and Thomas doing it alone. I don't know if Chris Howard's carried the ball once this half. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, to answer your question, Chris Howard did not come back from the halftime locker room, suffered bruised ribs in the first half, not available to the Wolverines here in half number two today. All right, very, very timely update. We figured there had to be a reason. Short drop. Greasy with a pump break and buried at the 17. Aaron Klein was there alongside Jeff Kramer. Probably a good decision here by Brian Greasy, who's ready to throw, pulls it down when he sees the defender in position for the interception and takes the loss and a sizable one rather than another terrible interception. I guess there's no interception, Dave. It doesn't care. No good ones. 
Iowa defense hasn't been quite as smothering as Michigan's through the air, but Greasy just 12 of 24, 128 yards, three picks. His worst day of the year by far. This will be interference on Flez Atkins, who climbed the back fairly obviously of Ty Streets. Flez is the best cover guy that Iowa has, and he's in good shape here if he simply times his break a little bit better. The rule says if you make contact with the receiver prior to the ball arriving, then you're guilty of interference. Flez is there just a step early. Comes over the top to bat the ball down, but he has contact with the receiver and a good call. What a killer on third and 16. The fact that it's an automatic first down is by far the most significant aspect of the play. Yeah, make a note of that one. Will issue plays his uh, ticket as soon as he heads over that bench. Michigan drive still alive. Anthony Thomas may squeeze out the Starting to sound like a broken record. Jared DeVries was in the backfield. He tripped him up. He has been dominant today. When you study a football team and they have a dominating defensive lineman, you have to rescheme virtually everything. I don't think Michigan expected this from Jared DeVries. And he has taken this game over. The bigger the game, the more he likes it. He has been the defensive MVP of last year's Alamo Bowl and the most valuable lineman of the Sun Bowl from two years ago. Thomas wrapped up by Steve English, the backup nose guard. And Michigan faced with another third down. They'll need five here as we near the five minute mark. They can't figure on getting too many more offensive opportunities. This is probably the biggest play of the game thus far. Michigan almost certainly must keep this drive alive to keep their hopes alive. Iowa ready to come with the blitz. Might have uh, gotten off too quickly. Tillman makes the catch. At the 45, good for 20 yards as we wait for the flag. But this is a very big call by the officials. So much of it depends on who moves and when. Defense offsides in the call. It's very important for the defense to show poise, not be distracted by the snap count. Breezy does a good job here, and then a great throw and catch. You see the mismatch once again, Tuman on Raj Clark. It's tough to ask a linebacker that weighs 245 pounds to run with a tight end that moves like Jeremy Tuman. Big play. John LaFleur, the man that moved for Iowa. Greasy finally with some time on another catch by Jeremy Tuman. 20 more, 15 more yards out at the 30. Exactly the same play. Sometimes offensive coordinators are criticized for repeating plays. More often they should be criticized if they don't repeat good plays. And in this case, Mike DeBoard comes up with a nice call going back to the, to the well for the second time and another good throwing catch. A Michigan drive, which is still alive because of a pass interference on a third down against Plez Atkins. There's the board. Ready to pull out every stop. With only five minutes left, it's still down. Thomas breaking through the middle for eight or nine. One back in the backfield. Backs, receivers, tight ends spread all over the field. The natural anticipation of the defense would be to expect a throw, and in case instead they hand it off to Thomas, who follows the excellent blocking up front by his center, Zach Adamy. Boom! Good movement. Good movement on Klein, and the big guy's loose. Even though Klein spins off, he rips through the tackle. This may be the day that Thomas can no longer be seen as a freshman. Same thing, and he's to the 15, another Michigan first down. Little fisticuffs occurring after the play. Flags all over the field. And again, 
depends on who hit first and who hit last. Normally, the player who hit last is the one that's called. Zach Adamy, the center, is involved. Third penalty on this Michigan drive against Iowa. One of the critical aspects of winning a football game. Personal foul. Is Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. You simply must keep your poise. Raj Clark is the man who commits the penalty, and it's a big one against his team. He's pulled from the game as a result. Anthony Thomas, left tackle, tried to cut it back at the five-yard line. He ran into LaFleur. Mike Tirico's latest update. And last one on Penn State. It's over. Minnesota, fourth and 16. They couldn't pick up the first down. So Penn State took the ball back, picked up the one first down they needed, then took a knee. Penn State, a five-touchdown favorite, wins by one. Will they be number one still? A lot to talk about later today and tonight. Boy, I guess so. Uh, what a question uh, to be pondered in Lincoln, where Nebraska has Texas Tech today. Meanwhile, second and goal for the Wolverines from the Iowa Five under three and a half minutes. Anthony Thomas to the two, where it's third and goal. Big Anthony's on track now. He's enjoying this and flying up in there, not really reading quite as well as he has on previous plays. This is Jeff Kramer, the injured Hawkeye, the junior out of Weatherford, Texas, who transferred from Notre Dame. Looked at first as if he was grabbing the left knee, and Hayden Fry himself is going to go out and check on Jeff. So we've got timeout with three minutes and ten seconds to go at Michigan Stadium. Iowa clinging to a three-point lead. Coming up next here on ESPN, golf's Nike Tour Championship from Opelika, Alabama. Richest event of the year on the Nike Tour. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Dave Ryan. 3-10 to go in Michigan Stadium. Iowa up 21-7 at the half. Up 24-21. At the moment, as Michigan looks at third and goal from the two. Play fake, Greasy on the roll, pulls up, there's Jeremy Tillman, and Michigan leads. extra point try for Craig Baker to force Iowa to think touchdown only and he's got it and it's 28 24 255 remaining for a possible Iowa comeback John Jansen is shaken up for Michigan this is a brilliant play call. Coaches like me and others love to talk about gut checks and bending your knees and knocking people back at the goal line. But you also better be able to do things like this. A little deception, three tight ends in the game. Excellent poise by the quarterback, Brian Greasy. Jeremy Tooman coming up with a big play as he has so often for this Michigan team. Now John Jansen, their offensive leader, down. They've already lost their defensive captain, Eric Mays. It appeared that Jeff Kramer was not badly hurt. We have to hope the same is true of John. Jeff Kramer, the outside linebacker for Iowa. So this goes 11 plays, 77 yards, capped off by Greasy to Tuma. And as you mentioned earlier, Dave, the two big penalties were crucial in that situation. Looks like Big John's going to be all right. Everybody here is happy about that, especially Mrs. Jansen, his mom, somewhere. Mike 
to Rico. What do you have? This is turning into an unbelievable Saturday, Dave. How about Ole Miss going into Baton Rouge, where number one Florida lost last week? And Stuart Patrick has a career high 336 passing yards, 60 on this touchdown to Grant Hurd. Ole Miss has the ball and lead by 12. Wow. Ball out from LSU over Florida last week. Penn State almost loses. The week they get back to number one, and LSU may well lose. Tim Dwight in the middle of the three deep pattern by Iowa, waiting for Jay Feely's kick. And he will keep it away from Mr. Dwight. Damon Gibson. Damon Gibson had his knee touch turf at the 27. And this playing surface has been a major factor in this football game with some critical slips by both teams. Physical slips, that is. This crowd was two things at the half, silent and sullen. <laughs> and they've gotten over it. And when Michigan came out to start the second half, they gave them maybe the loudest ovation of the year, and the, the, the players have responded with a 21-3 second half so far. Derrick Rose never snapped it. Everybody else was ready. In the first half, he snapped it when no one was ready, and that caused an Iowa turnover. The quarterback forgot the snap count there, and this is what happens. Even with a veteran quarterback, he has so Prior much to, the to snap, think about. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. He has so much to think about, he calls the correct audible and then forgets the snap count and pulls out, causing the penalty. Not a good way to start the drive. Banks went motion out of the backfield. Now comes back and incomplete. They tried to get him over the middle for the little screen. And he couldn't hang on. Second and 15. Both teams with all the timeouts. Football today is so driven by the performance of the quarterback because of the load that's on him, the cerebral and the physical and the tactical load that quarterbacks have to bear. Sometimes some of the little things slip away at the toughest times. It happens to everybody. Marcus Ray creeping up. Here he comes. Safety blitz picked up by Banks. Wide open. Chris Knipper. And the tight end is up to the 31 to make it for Iowa third and about six. And Matt Sherman showing his maturity here. Number 12 by calmly standing in the pocket after all that's happened. And hitting the big tight end. Giving him a chance to get this first down. Now at third and five rather than third and 15. Only the fifth completion of the day for Matt Sherman. One of 11 on third downs for Iowa. Remember, we're talking about the number two total offense in the country. Sherman chased and dropped at the 28 by Rod Renis. Glenn Steele is down, but he's the guy that broke the pocket. He beat Chad Deal to the inside, forced Sherman out of the pocket, and now he goes down. Impossible to tell from here what the injury might be. Coverage sack here all the way. Sherman looked up, looked left, right, middle, and saw nobody open. <laughs> he also saw Steele bearing down on him immediately. So as they check on Glenn Steele, 141 to go in Ann Arbor. Iowa's used its first time out as they discuss a fourth down and nine. 141 to go. And if you're ever going to say your prayers, now is the time if you're a Hawkeye. Well, there's a great story about saying prayers in athletic competition. The fellow goes with his priest to watch a boxing match. One of the guys crosses himself, says a prayer. The parishioner says, Father, will that help him? You say, yeah, if he's a good boxer. <laughs> so prayers might help if you're a real good football team on fourth and nine. Won't hurt. White comes left, Gibson right. Yeah. 
Ian Gold through the middle and pick him up on his blitz. Sherman finds Gibson. And Gibson in the open field dragged down at midfield by Charles Woodson. But Iowa is still alive on a 22-yard Sherman to Gibson connection. That is a phenomenal play by Matt Sherman, who's had a rough day. Now twice he's kept his team alive with superb poise and accuracy. What a great play by the quarterback. Just across midfield. Banks goes in motion. Sherman keeps his balance somehow. And out of bounds at the 48, a pickup of two. Woodson left his feet as if he expected a Sherman pass. If that's what had happened, it would have been an illegal pass beyond the line of scrimmage. And that took Woodson out of any chance uh, to bring Sherman down himself. But it stops the clock. It serves another purpose. Saves him a timeout with 106. 106,000 plus for Michigan, the 140th straight crowd of at least 100,000 in the big house. Jim Herman's defense under fire all day. This is what you pay to see. Coming again with a blitz, and they got him, Clint Copenhaver. Sherman called timeout here. He had enough presence of mind to do that. He just got blindsided by Copenhaver on a four-man blitz that he should have seen coming. So the Michigan thinking, if you blitz enough, sooner or later, one of them's going to hit. And Copenhaver gets the hit. For Iowa, third and 17. They have missed on their last six third down tries. On this one, they need to get just across the Michigan 40-yard line. They're down to their last time out. They have 58 seconds remaining, and they cannot think field goal. Sherman steps up again. There's an open man up the right side for another big chunk goes Banks, who has done most of his damage on the ground today. This time, he bites off 29 yards worth. And another mismatch. Remember, coaches work to develop these. A mismatch of Tavian Banks on Ian Gold, a linebacker. Gold is fast. Banks is faster. Clock rolling. Don't forget, as soon as we're complete here, the Nike Tour Championship from Alabama. Sherman from the 26. Pressure from Steele. Steps up, and it's intercepted by Sam Sword. of the year right here. Sam has taken over the leadership in the absence of Eric Mays and Matt Sherman did one of those inexplicable things. He'll not be able to explain this to himself or to anybody else. He threw it right to the wrong color shirt. Our Kelly Springfield players of the game today for Jared DeVries Pure brilliance. Ten tackles, three sacks, and for Michigan, Jeremy Tooman with a career high seven catches, 85 yards, and as it's going to turn out, the winning touchdown for Michigan. Kelly Springfield is proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund on behalf of these athletes. Final timeout used by Iowa with 25 seconds to go, and then we'll have the Nike Tour Championship. Michigan down 21 to 7 at the half. They come back, and it is sealed by Sam Swords' interception, the junior from Saginaw, Michigan. 
will uh, make it 6 and 0 oh for Michigan. For people who've never been in a game like this, the guy that summed it up best was Vince Lombardi. He used to tell us regularly, when you win one like this, all the joy, all the happiness, all the laughter goes to the victor. And to the loser, all he gets is the determination to come back again. And that's how it feels. There's nothing quite like it in the world. Look at these youngsters that have worked so hard to get to this place. And Iowa will come back and have their day. So the Wolverines have done their part to set up the unbeaten showdown next week in East Lansing with Michigan State, which has Northwestern this afternoon. Michigan wins it. Storming from behind 28-24. Michigan, Michigan State, here on ESPN, 1230 Eastern, next Saturday. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Bill Curry and Dave Ryan, Dave Barnett, thanks for being with us today in Ann Arbor, where the Wolverines pull it off. Now, stay tuned for Gulf's Nike Tour Championship from Opelika, Alabama.